Hi guys, Mr. Ruffle Waffles here. This is a guide for you to build the shield on Blood of the Dead. Now, the shield in this map is really, really cool, and it's got some parts that are a little different to normal shield parts, the first of which is just here. There's blue fire on a power box right outside the cafeteria. Now, there are two other possible spawns for that blue fire. If you come through the old Mob of the Dead spawn room towards the library area, which we're in right now, it can also be on that power box. And then there's a third power box too, which is just along this little corridor here. We're going to drop down in front of the warden's office and the power box that's just under the sign that says Michigan there can also contain that blue fire. So that's the first buildable part that we're going to be using for the shield. The second is going to be located down from the warden's office where we just were and through these kind of corridors here. Just follow my path and you'll get there no problem. We're going all the way down to the spiral staircase. You're going to want to count the barriers that you go past. So here's the first right here. Then we're going across the second barrier just there and now the third or the little opening I guess you could call it and right there as you can see is the first possible spawn for the second shield part. There are two other possible spawns for it. Just come down the stairs here, get the zombies out of your way, and on the left, it can also be in that doorway. Alternatively, the third possible spawn is just here towards where that wood is on the right-hand side of my screen. The next part you need doesn't have a location because it could be anywhere. Because you need to wait for Brutus to spawn in so you can kill him, and he will then give you the Warden's Key. Brutus normally spawns in around round four or five, so you shouldn't need to wait too long in your game to have him spawn. Once he's spawned in and he's dead, the Warden's Key will be able to be picked up by just going over to it and holding square. Now, assuming you got the previous two parts that I showed you, you now have the full collection of parts you need to build the Blood of the Dead shield. To actually build it, we're going to head out to the docks and underneath where the gondola normally travels back and forth, there's a buildables bench right at the top of the slope. Once the shield has been crafted, you'll notice that it's not any ordinary shield because you have a key on your right hand, which you can use to suck zombie souls, and in your left hand, you've got the rest of the shield. Now, that key is not to be underestimated because it's useful for other things in the map, like actually activating the Pack-a-Punch, and it's also good for killing dogs. I mean, you instantly suck the souls out of those dogs, and so if you've got a dog round and there's a bunch of them spawning in, whip your keys out and you'll be absolutely fine. The shield melee is obviously really useful as well. I mean, that's what the shield's for at the end of the day, protecting your back and bashing stuff in front of you. But there's also another ability on top of all of this that we haven't talked about yet. If you suck three zombie souls up with the key, you'll end up with a charged key in your right hand. And if you then aim down sight with L2 and press R2, you'll do a shield blast, much like we used to see in a map like, for example, Garod Crovy. Now, this shield blast can be used for various Easter eggy activities, like activating the Pack-a-Punch, and I have separate videos on my channel explaining how all of that works. Somehow, though, the shield's secrets have not yet been exhausted. There is more to talk about. You can also L2 with the shield, that's aim down sight, if you will, and you'll go into afterlife vision, and you'll be able to see things like hidden skulls around the map. Now, if you're familiar with Mob of the Dead, you'll know exactly what sort of thing I'm talking about here, but if you're not so familiar, all you need to know is that it basically lets you hunt for Easter eggs a little bit more efficiently because you can see these kind of ghostly spirits hiding around the place. So overall, this shield has a huge number of uses, and I really recommend building it in your game, and basically having it on your back at all times because it's so damn useful. Speaking of so damn useful, hopefully you've enjoyed this guide. I've tried to make it as clear as possible, just like all my no-nonsense guides. So if you've enjoyed it, please drop a like, and I'll see you very soon in another Black Ops 4 Zombies video. Cheers, goodbye for now. Bye for now.